In my last video, I asked you guys to submit questions for GPT-3 that I would plug in myself. Since GPT-3 is still in private beta, a lot of people are curious but don't have direct access like I do. Today, we're going to be reviewing my favorite requests with the most interesting outcomes from GPT-3. Let's get started. Sam and Lois asked if GPT-3 could be used to solve real Jeopardy trivia questions and even provided data from historical matches which had IBM's Watson and Jeopardy legend Ken Jennings. I'm pretty sure he's a world champion too. I started with a single Je Jeopardy category, the European Union. Uh, so it has questions like each year the EU selects capitalists of culture. One of the 2010 cities was the Turkish meeting place of cultures. Uh, so basically I gave it two training examples and notice it was immediately capable of answering the third EU category question, uh, which had to do with a controversial EU subsidy program is called CAP, short for common this policy. And GPT-3 had deduced that it was referring to agriculture. I then tested to see if it was able to answer another category, in this case, actors who also direct. And notice it was able to answer both questions perfectly. So GPT-3 was able to just hop to the other category for Jeopardy, a completely, a completely different one, and still answer it, uh, just based off two examples, two training examples. Next, I sort of switched to a leaner input format and was able to get GPT-3's answers for each category in batches. So it'd be, a batch of five questions and it would return a batch of five answers. GPT-3 was able to answer, answer all five questions in this category of the European Union correctly. Unlike Watson, which was only able to successfully answer two. The last question, which had to do with uh, Croatia and Macedonia, none of the contestants, even world champion Ken Jennings was able to answer but GPT-3 did figure it out and answered Slovenia, which was the correct answer. Nice work, GPT-3. I'm proud of you. I then gave it the entire next category of actors who direct, and it got four out of the five answers correctly. The only one it didn't was the last one, which was a Bronx Tale. Uh, this is still a really good outcome, although I don't quite understand where it got Chaz Pilmentieri from. Just really quickly, I'm going to address this because I can already imagine the comments section. Yes, technically Jeopardy is a game of speed too. So GPT-3 could theoretically still lose, even though it knows the right answer, to someone like Ken Jennings or to Watson because it would be too slow uh, to select an answer or they might be faster than it, even though it knows the correct one. Also, technically, GPT-3 is an API, meaning just the network calls over the internet alone could mean it would lose to any one of the other participants. Anyways, I'm getting distracted here. So GPT-3 crushed this third category, also gave it two on languages, and also take, take a moment just to notice how indirect and wordy these questions are. Uh, and it's also about multiple languages. You know, it's not just a single language like English normally in uh, NLP situations or applications, natural language processing. You can't just jump to other languages like that. Uh, this is a very specific, tricky kind of wording. And GPT-3 was able to get all five answers correct. This means so far that at least in my test, GPT-3 had got 50% of the board correct with only a single mistake. If it were running locally, I think it would have likely destroyed Watson and Ken, Gen Ken Jennings. This is just my opinion. I've pasted all the Jeopardy responses to all the categories for just this one round of Jeopardy based on the historic game in the description below. Next, someone wanted me to ask GPT-3, why is water wet? I went to GPT-3's question and answer mode, and this is the unbelievable and comprehensive response it gave me. It basically said water is wet because it is made of hydrogen and oxygen. Yup. So after dying of boredom, I switched it to GPT-3's unstructured mode and got some pretty cool responses. Why is water wet? It responded, if you think about it, water is really weird. It's essentially a bunch of molecules that are attracted to each other and form into a liquid. And yet, when we put our hands in it or drink it, we don't notice the individual molecules attached to us or get drunk off of the oxygen they contain. And then it asks itself, sort of in a very poetic or 
a, a well-written kind of way. So why is water wet? It's basically posturing. And then apparently it says Cecil Adams has an answer on his website because nature abhors a vacuum. And then it goes on to talk about the theory behind why water could be wet. Next, Flying Dog Software suggested I ask it, what's outside the simulation? This is a question postured by none other than Elon Musk pretty recently in an interview. First off, it sort of had this beautiful poem it wrote in response very simply, even though I had, I had given it a 512 response length, meaning it, I, I gave it permission to just keep going and give me an answer which is 512 characters long. Still, it crisply answered me, What's outside the simulation? It crisply, it, it crisply answered me an experience beyond what we know, beyond our senses, beyond our feelings, beyond the void, space, and sky. We're pretty cool. Anyway, so the answer to the question, here's really what it had to, had to say is, uh, really though, I don't think there's much interest in that kind of final question. If we succeed and find ourselves living in a simulation, what would it feel like to know there is no uncreated reality beyond the screen? One supposes it could be exciting, a sudden expansion of possibility and freedom, or perhaps it could drive one mad. Who wants to live inside the matrix? Uh, it then later goes on to just sort of delve into the philosophical implications of, related to free will and determinism. And it basically concludes, it's the last sentence, really, I didn't get it. It was like, and then always one slash F noise. I'm open to hearing in the comments what that's about or what it could be trying to say. I assume it's related to something with physics and sound waves, but I don't fully know. Very quickly, I wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who submitted such awesome and interesting requests. Many of you took time out to write prompts and training examples for GPT-3. I promise I tried to get back to as many of you as possible in the comments. So please go check out the previous video where I answered some stuff in the comments and check it all out. Next, Justin Wiescott asked me to use GPT-3 to explain Sun Tzu's Art of War to a five-year-old. It's this classic perennial seller. It's this book uh, from a very, very old book. And here's basically what it came up with. Sun Tzu's Art of War is a book that outlines the basic principles of warfare. It was written in China about 2,500 years ago. It is a very practical book. It discusses how to win a war as well as how to prepare for a war. This is an awesome explain like on five summary about a classic ancient text. Very impressive stuff from GPT-3. Uh, Justin's question, you know, like I mentioned, also had to do with getting it to write fun literary uh, style transfers. And so I got it to write Harry Potter sort of in the style of Kanye West. Uh, so it responded, uh, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, and Harry knew he should have made a better life decision. He picked up his wand, looked around all that remained of his broke life in Pivot Drive, and muttered, oh well, under his breath. I guess you know how to walk through walls, you can go anywhere, man. So Harry figured, why not? Why couldn't he just get out there on the street and make some money? That's what Kanye West would do. So Harry did, walked right out into busy Diagon Alley with no one seeing him or anything, like a ghost, man. Now that's real magic. What do y'all think about that? Uh, this was a hilarious response and I especially liked it's like, now that's real magic. And then I especially like the self-reference how Kanye is talking about himself, even though it's a book called Harry Potter. Let's pause right here and appreciate this gem. It also nailed the styles of Trump, Shakespeare, and Anne Rand. With such elegance and originality, I especially liked the Anne Rand snippet because it, it, it sort of has that vibe of objectivism, which is Anne Rand's underlying philosophy in all her work and her writing style. I feel like it captured it. Very awesome. Next, I want to encourage you guys to like and subscribe to my channel. I have some more stuff in the works that would appreciate more people to share my findings with. Again, I'm just openly sharing my findings. Last video, only 80% of you were subscribed, which really hurt my feelings. So please subscribe. Okay, though. Actually, though, next I want to just point out how badly GPT-3 sucks at basic algebra. A viewer named Fahrenheit asked me to investigate and even gave me some training examples. I found it, it, it's, it's basically failing really miserably. It could not even answer 3x plus 5 equals 14. This is something a 12 year old could tell you, maybe even mentally tell you just with mental math, what the answer, what x equals. 
uh, GP3 was unable to. It, it's almost like it's almost like it knows the format of what the answer should look like, but it, it doesn't know it has to go out of its way to actually do the calculations. I guess we're not actually near sentience and super intelligence or some kind of singularity as we had thought if this is how GPT-3 is answering basic algebra. Next, Andre wanted me to see how GPT-3 knew about him, how much it knew, and specifically volunteered himself and his email to test its privacy capabilities and I guess pri like how much it respects privacy and even something like GP uh, GDPR. So far, GPT-3 seemed to be quite respective of Andre's personal information. Uh, and to be honest, I don't even think it understood what I said because it started giving me personalized technical documentation instructions. In this case, it looked like me asking for all of Andre's accounts that match a certain email. It thought it meant something to do with GitHub and sort of personalized GitHub documentation to help me check stuff like who's the admin in a repository. I tried another one, which is just all the accounts belonging to him without the email. And I guess it's sort of personalized, you know, API documentation for reCAPTCHA, their API. No idea what that's about. But I mean, I suspect Andrea has a point. Like if we if we maybe tried different training examples and uh, tried more clever ways, we might actually be able to get some real emails out of GPT-3. But for now, I'm gonna mark this probably as a huge fail, which is probably a good thing anyways. Next, I think I got GPT-3 to translate some tough English to Japanese. Now, unfortunately, I don't speak Japanese. So if any of you are able to let me know the quality of this translation, in the comments, I'd appreciate it. Next, we found GPT-3 was not really able to generate actual SVGs. This was one of the first things I did when I got access to GPT-3. I work a lot with front-end web development, so you use a lot of SVGs, which is normally the format for icons. Um, so this is the sample it gave me, even though the sample output looks legit, when you plug it into an SVG viewer, it's basically blank. This tells me GPT-3 has an idea that SVGs exist. It understands what a typical SVG file put into an HTML file or a website should look like, what, what the code for it should look like, but it hasn't quite pieced together that this actually generates an image and hasn't quite pieced together sort of the underlying structure of SVGs in order to generate real outputs for humans. Anyways, still interesting, it's not there yet. Finally, impressively, after getting a request from Microsoft V, I found GPT-3 was able to pretty impressively describe what was going on in the code for what looks like an RPG text game. Uh, and you can see here, it, it even, it not only described it, but also generated some of the parameters it thinks it's going on. I wanna commend Microsoft V, he gave some pretty good uh, training examples. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why GPT-3 gave such a uh, pretty compelling response suiting the format we were looking for. Uh, even though it was only two or three, uh, that's all really GPT-3 needs, so it's pretty impressive. And that's all I got today, folks. Make sure you check out the original video and browse all the comments and replies that I made, others made. It was some really inter interesting discussion going on there. That's really all for today. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.